Okay, good morning everybody. Um, today we're going to be talking about tagging and tracking great white sharks, which is something we're doing right now in a hands bike. We have two sharks currently tagged. Uh, we're going to be talking about why we're doing this and the methods that we use to tag and to track, and a bit about the information we can learn by doing this. But I'm just going to start with a bit uh, about myself and about uh, our companies that are involved with this tracking program. So a bit about me, I did my degree at Southampton University in the UK. I'm originally from the UK and I moved to here about two years ago. I spent a year in Mossel Bay and uh, I've now been in Hansby for a year and I'm enrolled with the University of Pretoria for my master's project. Uh, I work for Marine Dynamics as the marine biologist on boards uh, and a guide on the boats as well. Uh, while we're working on boards, uh, Marine Dynamics boat shark fever, we are taking observational research on the great whites that we see, looking at the population dynamics, taking dorsal fin IDs, which I'm going to talk a bit more about, um, and trying to recognise as many sharks as we're seeing, and try and relay those uh, sightings to things like environmental parameters and how they might be affecting the shark sightings and the seasonal occurrences of the sharks within the bay. Uh, I also work for the Dyer Island Conservation Trust, which is what we produce all of our research through. The Dyer Island Conservation Trust was set up in 2006 and its main role is to help protect the animals that we have in this area of South Africa. It's very unique and we have five animals in particular uh, that we are most interested in conserving. Our marine big five are the dolphins, the whales, the seals, the penguins and the great white sharks. And currently we have research projects set up um, to, to look into research for all of these animals. And the current research project that we're going to be talking about is the tagging and tracking of the great white sharks. But we also have southern right whale acoustic setup, uh, interactions between African penguins, Cape fur seals, and the great white sharks, and we are looking at the dolphin population as well. So there's a few of our current research projects. Now, marine dynamics is a bit different to your everyday cage diving. What we're keen to promote is that your choice does make a difference. If you choose to come with marine dynamics, you are helping protect the animals in the bay and help protect uh, the marine big five by helping to fund some of our conservation and research projects. Uh, we have the dedicated research going on through the trips. Um, we have a pretty set up population over the last four years. We've been taking up uh, dorsal fin IDs of the great white sharks we see and that's going through to an ongoing project to look at the population dynamics of the great white sharks. And right now, Marine Dynamics is helping support the tagging and tracking program. Without Marine Dynamics, this program couldn't happen. So the hands by area, and we're going to talk about a second area as well, uh, and we're going to be comparing the tracks to what we've seen in Mossel Bay. But the hands by area is famous for Dyer Islands. Just offshore, this island right here is Dyer Island, and just adjacent to Dyer Island is Giza Rock. The reason we find so many great white sharks in this area is because of the Cape Fur Seals on Giza Rock. We have between 50 and 60,000 Cape Fur Seals on the island and they're basically the main source of food for the great white sharks. So the area in between the two, which is known as Shark Alley, locally we refer to as the McDonald's drive through for great white sharks because there's just that much food to eat. Now the area that I'm going to be comparing uh, my data to is Mossel Bay. Uh, we've had an extensive tagging and tracking program there uh, for the last three years. So part of my research is going to be comparing the tracks of the sharks that we get in Hansby to Mossel Bay. Uh, there, their seal island is very close to the beach. So there's a few differences in the bay and we're expecting to see a few differences in the way the sharks behave as a result of that. So the great white shark. It's also known as the white shark, the white pointer, the tommy high. And it was formerly known as the Vagunctan high or white death. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about why those names are unfair for this animal. It is portrayed in the movies as the big jaws animal, which will eat anything and everything in its path. And if you are in the water with a great white shark, you will be killed. But the fact is, and the truth, is this is very unfair for the animal's image. Uh, they are quite curious and inquisitive animals and they really are in need of our protection because over the years they have been fished to 
close to extinction levels. So they can grow to lengths of six or seven meters, which is pretty huge. I mean, that's about the length of this tent. Uh, they mature at sizes of about 4.5 to 5 meters in length. And that's about 15 to 20 years of age. So when you think about how long it's going to take an animal to get to that size, if they're being fished, they need to survive and avoid fishermen for 15 to 20 years before they can even put back into their population. That is why taking just any single individual from a great white shark population, particularly a mature individual, can really deplete the stock very quickly. They're born live, about this sort of size, uh, and they're already ready to feed from the moment they're born. There's no parental guidance. They're hunters from the moment